In the name of God, the Benevolent, the Merciful. Hello and welcome to Standpoint, broadcasting to you from London with me, Amir Ali Tahuri. On this session, we'll be talking about justice for victims of sexual assault. Now, the UK's Office for National Statistics reported over 24,000 uh, cases of rape and nearly 500,000 uh, sexual crimes across Britain, marking the highest rate of sexual assault recorded within a year. Figures indicate a 22% rise in sexual crimes since uh, comparison to previous um, year uh, to 2013. Now, I'll be asking if there's sufficient justice uh, for sexual assault. And joining me in the studio to answer this question is David Eden, a former Hertfordshire police officer. Uh, and uh, later on in the program, we'll be talking with Alexander Barron, who is a journalist and social political commentator. Welcome to the program, David. Hi, pleased to meet you. Uh, um, well, let's, um, let's get uh, Alexander Barron's take on this. Um, he's joining us by phone. Uh, he's uh, a journalist and social political commentator. Hello, Alexander. Hello. Hello. Um, what's your take on um, the... Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Just a bit, yeah. Right. What's, uh, what's your take on... Uh, policing um, in on on victims of uh, ha who have been sexually assaulted. Do you think Hello? that do you think there's a failure of policing? <coughs> um, well, there, there, are, there are many issues here. One is why is it the police like targets? So they will chase people for trivial crimes or even for non crimes. Um, we have this uh, with, with prostitution. Uh, with uh, drug drug offences, um, there's been a lot of talk about. Even senior police officers now realise that drug laws have failed. Um, for for ge genuine victims, I mean, I've been a victim of crime myself. Uh, I've been seriously assaulted three times. Uh, the last time, but speci specifically for fatal. for sexual assault, do you think there's a failure for police to engage uh, for victims of uh, sexual assault and rape? Well, when, when you have genuine uh, rape, uh, when, when, when you have a genuine rape, um, th there needs to be proper support. But a lot, a lot of the cases we're seeing now are um, uh, the, with this hysteria from Operation U Tree. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just writing, writing about this at the moment. Um, <clears throat> th th these are really frivolous cases. Um, where, where, where you have, um, I, I heard your uh, uh, interviewee there say that um, women are prosecuted for making false allegations when they're not. I only know one case that that happened. That was in the United States. Um, that there are, there have been a number of prosecutions in in, in the UK in, in recent years for false allegations. But I think it generally be right. Yes. Um, she, she, the police will treat her as a victim more or less uncritically because rape victims, uh, rape is a crime. Right. The the line keeps cutting out, Alexander. Yeah. We'll just we'll just hold it there. Um, if I can go Maybe back to David. Physical uh, injury as well. Um, there, there's no there's no there's generally no question that she. Is right. Victim. If I can post this question to David, you said um, um, if the. It, they, they tend not to be genuine. Do you, what, what's your take on this? In respect to what? Turned in, to the, the, the sexual assaults tend not to be uh, genuine, which is why the police aren't taking it more seriously. No, I'm not. No, I think you misunderstood me. There. I'm not saying that they're not genuine. This is this is Alexander's uh, perspective. Oh, on right. the issue. Uh, I was I was wondering what your take is on uh, on what Alexander said. Yeah, I, I think you know Alexander possibly does have a point there. Um, there are going to be. A percentage of allegations that mm -hmm. aren't genuine. There are, there are. Human nature is going to come into this, unfortunately, and that's a fact of life. That some people are going to see it as, a, you know, it's an opportunity that maybe we we can benefit from this financially. Mm -hmm. um, simple, basic retribution. Um, you know, somebody finds out that I don't know that whoever it is they're with has slept with somebody else, and well, they're far enough, and then he's raped me, and you know, emotions come into this, and there's always going to be that. And it's, it, well, it's not just around sexual offences; it's around everything. People mm. will behave in, in this way. Um, 
as you said about Operation U Tree, that uh, you know this has brought it so much into the into the public light. The, you know the so-called Jimmy Savile effect, and as a result, we've seen um, something between twenty-five and thirty percent increase in allegations coming forward. Right. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that that they're not true, but I you know I, I go out and I interview and I speak to people and. But it can't be a majority case, can it? No, it's not a majority case. Not a majority case at all. But mm. in some cases, um, when I'm, I'm unfortunately I can't talk about it because it's potentially subjudice. But I'm, I'm talking to some people that are, are making allegations of paedophilic activity within the education system. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm I'm talking to some alleged victims and they're telling me quite detailed stories and so on and so forth. But in, strangely enough, further on down the line, I'm talking to other people. And what I'm hearing is an identical story. You know, we're not looking at variables here. We're not looking at this. It, it, it's almost as if, well, X has told Y this, and Y is going to repeat the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in that circumstances, when we sort of like a little bit of hysteria around it, yes. it, it's difficult to determine who is and who isn't telling the truth. And police officer training or not, you know, you're no better at telling when somebody's lying than, than you know, your average window cleaner. Mm. It doesn't work that mm. way. We're, we're going to uh, continue in the program and talk about the uh, British celebrities, um, uh, Rolf Harris and, and Jimmy Savile's uh, cases that have, uh, you know, you, you touched on the issue of how it opened up um, and encouraged others to um, talk about their uh, uh, sex crime. Um, and so we'll continue um, after the break. So stay with us and see you shortly. Welcome back to Standpoint. We're talking about justice for victims of sexual assault uh, with uh, David Eden, a former uh, uh, police officer. Uh, and on, by, on the phone, we have uh, Alexander Barron, who's a journalist and social political commentator. Uh, continuing from the, what we were talking about before, about the um, British celebrities ha that have been exposed, uh, that the, the rape allegations have, have been exposed, they've, you know, they've gone to prison, and it's encouraged others to um, get in touch with, with police and, and take their cases forward. Um, first of all, with the case of celebrities, and, and now we've got... Uh, politicians, British politicians exposed about the paedophilia that they've been involved with. Why do these cases, why have they taken so long to, to, to be revealed? I think, and it's quite right that these things should come out mm. now. Let's get to Alexander's view on this. Um, Alexander, do you think, uh, by phone, uh, Alexander, do you think uh, that justice applies to all uh, who have oh. um, offended victims of, uh, you know, with, uh, regarding sexual crime? Well, hopefully, hopefully, I, I should I should point out I've done quite a lot of research on the Operation U Tree case, and I couldn't uh, disagree more. Um, your, your interviewee says that um, there's been cover-ups. Well, a lot of things have been covered up to protect innocent people. Uh, for example, there's uh, a man at the moment, um, a former child actor, has been making allegations against all sorts of people, including uh, former Chancellor Ken Clark. These allegations are false. And they've been, uh, they don't get the air. They don't get aired because <clears throat> um, to protect the innocent people's reputations. If somebody, if some, if Amir, somebody were to accuse you of rape, uh, would you, would you, uh, and it was shown to be false, as I no doubt it would be. Would you want this publicised, or would you want it to quietly go away? With regard to Rolf Harris, um, you mentioned Rolf Harris. The case against Rolf Harris is ludicrous. Uh, with with the the Portsmouth, the woman is about to uh, indigenously sold at Portsmouth. There's absolutely no evidence worthy of the name that he was ever at Portsmouth. That, is, that charge should never have been brought. It should never have been prosecuted. The judge should have thrown it out. And uh, how the jury convicted, I don't know. Um, what we're seeing here is a witch hunt. Right. And now, when it comes when it comes to genuine rapes, mm. uh, you have a you have a man who's especially. Uh, most rapes are committed by serial rapists. Throw the book at them, lock them up, throw away the key. But not this 10, 20, 30, 40 year old rubbish about uh, women who were too afraid to come forward because they wouldn't, thought they wouldn't be believed. Uh, a, a genuine rape victim will come forward and will be believed because it will be obvious she's been raped. And uh, all, all this stuff about cover-up is, is. Do you have really the same views about? Uh, do you have the same views about the uh, case with um, with Prince Andrew, who uh, who's being accused <coughs> by um, 
a young lady, well, Virgin let's come back to this, right? Virginia she, Roberts, who, who's she, saying she, that he sexually claimed, assaulted him? Her claim is that she had sex with Prince Andrew in London when she was 17 years old. Now, right. let's assume that is true. Uh, it is not a criminal offence to have sex, consensual sex with a 17-year-old. So if Andrew was about 40 at the time, he had sex with a 17-year-old, uh, that might be something to boast about another time. If, but, but if it's by force, it's illegal. <coughs> no, 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 no. For, look, this was a young woman who's flown all around the world uh, performing sexual favours and sexual services for three people by her own admission. Uh, she, met her, she met her future husband in Thailand. Uh, she parted company with her employer or pimp or whatever you want to call him for whatever reason. The money's run out and now she wants to get some more money coming in by tarnishing the reputations of the rich and famous. And the, the tabloid press is lapping it up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this woman does not claim to have been raped by Prince Andrew. She claims to have sex with him. Well, if she were paid to have sex with him, then uh, she has a duty of confidentiality. So she's the one who's in the wrong. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a total non-story. This is, it's, it's not having a good uh, image for the royal family. For well, the if, it's family. True, if it's true, um, let, you know. Yeah, let's let, let's let's get to David's opinion on this. Um, what do you make of this, David? Yeah, I think what he said, a, a lot of what he said, made a lot of sense, and it's very right. The victims taking advantage. Yes, uh, the, the, I, the, I do. Th I, you know, I couldn't in, agree in more with issue. him on that. Um, and what I would advocate is is, is what's needed. Uh, we don't need to start exposing people. We don't need to start exposing Prince Andrew. We don't need to start exposing Rolf Harris or anybody else. Mm. Um, you know, what is needed are, are thorough, robust investigations. Right. Uh, Alexander, uh, Alexander Baron, if, if you're still with us, um, I'd like to ask you, um, the, uh, following the case of Rotherham where 1,400 children were abused, um, do you think the cr there should be justice, do you think there's an absence of justice more for the victims? Well, I, th <coughs> I think the scale of that is probably questionable. But the, the, the question you really have to ask is, where are the parents? You know, uh, a lot of people have made uh, made this out to be, um, you know, Islamic rape gangs and that. Of course, what they forget is that in Iran, for example, rape can be capital. Um, it, it, where, where are the parents? Where where are the where are the a lot of these girls are supposedly in care? Um, so there's they should never, you know, thirteen year old girls shouldn't be on the street running around, riding around in taxis. Um, so so. There have been a number of prosecutions there, and, and people have gone to jail, and, and there have been further arrests. Yeah, I mean, these people deserve exemplary sentences. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a bigger issue here. Um, girl, girls must be kept on a fairly tight rein. And if we had some sort of... Um, if we had, uh, didn't have a sort of total breakdown, then this sort of thing wouldn't happen. Um, I think we should look to, more to the Islamic system there. Um, girl... Girl, men of a certain age should not have access to girls. Um, <clears throat> this, this, this works both ways because you do get false allegations and you, you do you also get men um, doing things they shouldn't be doing. So um, it, it, it really needs... We, we've got to work on present, preventing this in the future. What, what happened there? And some of the cases have been truly horrendous, you know. Um, well, do you think there's... Uh, there's um not enough deterrence in the criminal justice system to potentially deter well, it criminals it, it, from. It shouldn't happen in the first offending. place. You know, the, they shouldn't be. Uh, men, men, men riding around in taxis with, go, with young girls shouldn't. It shouldn't be allowed. Um, and if we have a, if, if if we had a proper system, this wouldn't happen. Where where the, if these men were arrested um, at the start, they wouldn't. It wouldn't progress this far. I mean, there must be there must be some sort of um, some sort of law that could be applied here. Well, that's the point. People who ha who are often in power uh, feel that they can get away with it. Um, giving an example of uh, the uh, Sheffield United footballer Chad Evans, uh, he was st supposed to have a five-year prison sentence. He did two and a half years, and he's out. He's continuing his his, his career. Well, that 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 is a, a that is a. He's still appealing that, but that is, um, as far as rape cases go, that is at the borderline. And what happened there, you had a woman went to a hotel with a man to have sex. Uh, she woke up the next morning. She couldn't, she couldn't, she said she couldn't remember if she had sex with one man 
or with two or with none. Um, so, I mean, a five-year sentence there, if the, if the conviction was warranted, uh, the five-year sentence was warranted. But uh, for, for, gen- for, for rape cases with a capital R, then five years is not sufficient. And right, but, but serial, you're saying serial, that case is, is debatable itself. You, is, serial, there, there's right. an argument there. Let's, yeah, uh, serial, serial rapists, though. Right. Uh, I mean, because there is no capital punishment, there will be the, there will be no capital punishment. They have to be locked up, if not for forever, then for t- until such time as they are no longer capable of attacking a woman. Mm-hmm. <coughs> did, you, did you say you, there should be capital punishment? Well, I mean, the, <coughs> well, I mean, the, we have to face that ca- the capital punishment is not going to come back, whatever happens. So the, 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 altern- the only alternative is to lock people up for a long time. But is it deserved for people who are, for example, serial, serial rapists? Well, a, ser- a serial rapist would be executed in Iran, wouldn't they? And uh, I've got no problem with that. But um, it's, there's no point us arguing of what, what should happen. It's what's going to happen or what is not going to happen. Um, a man who's, uh, the man who rapes a woman in the park holds a knife at her throat does this two or three times, he's going to be locked up forever. Or, as I say, until such time as the next time he tries to attack a woman, he'll be so feeble that she'll, uh, she'll whack him. <laughs> um, you know, they, they have to be locked up for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I will say is that uh, with such things as, uh, if you remember the case of John Warboys, the Metropolitan Police came in for a lot of criticism over that, but... It's very, it's very easy to be to be wise in hindsight because that was a guy who had a particular, uh, a unique methodology. He was targeting women who were drunk, um, a lot of the time. He was he was he was dragging them, uh, and uh, the police coming for a lot of a lot of stick over that. I, I don't think I don't think it's fair to criticise the police, uh, say with wisdom in hindsight, where where you have some something like that. And the other thing I will say about this this this. This three murders cases. I'm, I'm willing to believe a lot of things about the police, but um, if, oh, let's if, just move if, on as as we shorten time. Yeah, um, if, if murders did happen there, it would yes. require I mean, an absolutely enormous conspiracy with police officers involved, and I just don't believe that happened. Right. Okay. I just have to move on. Um, there are 134 options now, mm-hmm. um, and I can actually see this. It's 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 going to increase. It's not going to decrease. Right. On that though, we have to end the program. A uh, big thank you to uh, you, David Evans, and uh, Alexander Barron. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Standpoint. Goodbye.